Let's start with understanding the existing connectivity types in IoT applications. There are many connectivity options available. Few of them are wired, few of them are wireless. I'm going to first highlight the two wired connectivity options. The first one is Ethernet, second one is optical fiber. The rest of the methods or options available are RFID, Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, LoRa, and NFC. All these are wireless options. Based on what application you are building, based on the cost, power consumption, and the distance of transmission, you need to choose the best of the connectivity type for your application. When you start with the proof of concept, you will normally go with Bluetooth or Wi-Fi because they are readily available and easy to use as well. But when you have to iterate and deploy it further, you may have to choose LoRa or any other appropriate connectivity based on the scaling and the distance of transmission as well. We will learn more about all these in detail shortly. Let's first learn about the Ethernet and the optical fiber. As you know, from the time the computer networking started growing, Ethernet is an inevitable and indispensable option available in front of us. Wired connectivity is the best choice for all IoT applications provided portability is not required there. When portability is required, wired connectivity might not be a good option. Wired connectivity gives you high speed, uninterrupted connectivity, and it is always preferred. Ethernet and optical fiber are the two widely used wired connectivity options in IoT. I repeat, when your system doesn't require portability, you can go with wired connectivity and option lies between Ethernet and optical fiber. Ethernet cables are inexpensive, but as you know, the attenuation is higher as compared to optical fiber and also associated with many other problems which include the crosstalk. It is used for short distance, full duplex, wired communication. But on the other hand, optical fiber cables are much expensive when compared with Ethernet cables. Also, they can be used for long distance transmission where the data loss is not compromised. But optical fibers can only support half duplex wired connectivity. There is a disadvantage associated with optical fiber which is connected to the half duplex way of communicating. RFID is radio frequency identification, means that the system works on the frequency of the radio waves for identification. It is typically used in applications where a unique person or object must be identified. Well, you and me are using it already. We have identity cards, we have library cards, all those are already RFID cards. Intuitive examples of them which can include even the metro train tickets, which are actually the RFID labels. When you show the ticket, when you show the RFID card to the reader, the money can be automatically detected. And this is a simple example that I can cite immediately. The system has a receiver, which will emit radio waves. And when the RFID tags, which are encoded with the digital information, are brought into the contact with the receiver, the information is then read by the radio waves. This is the simple principle that RFID is all following. The next option that you need to understand is Bluetooth. This is one of the oldest and most common communication protocols that we have been using. IoT is still surviving with Bluetooth is absolutely a right way to mention it. The standard Bluetooth modules used in IoT can transfer data up to a distance of about 9 meters, which means that they are definitely efficient within a short range. If the distance is long range, we cannot use Bluetooth. For the applications like indoor localization at the larger places, as in some universities, a new type of Bluetooth device is developed, which is also called BLE, Bluetooth Low Energy. This is a low energy, power, low power consuming device which can transmit Bluetooth signal. This is growing and in fact, this has been used in most of the applications these days. A normal daily usage of Bluetooth connectivity is the data transmission between the phones and wireless earphones. 
we are mostly using it and most of us may have this equipment already in our pocket. Bluetooth is one of the most unavoidable technologies for connectivity and everyone should know about it. We will learn about it in detail in near future when we go deeper into the connectivity types during the product building stage. The next one that you need to understand is Wi-Fi. Wireless Fidelity provides wireless connectivity for the IoT devices to the storage platforms, web pages, Android applications and so on. We are used to this Wi-Fi at home, at office, at railway stations, bus stands and many options are available for us to use Wi-Fi. Wi-Fi has already opened the door to a new world of IoT options where remote controlling of systems, data acquisition, all these have become reality and most importantly, they can be done quickly as well as efficiently. It is a most preferred option where the system must be made portable and connectivity to the online services are also required. A simple example would be helpful right now. A system is made which will sense the presence of toxic gases in the environment and it has to report to an online portal. In this situation, one will not be able to provide any other connectivity means other than Wi-Fi. That's the best means of communication there and that's how the system could be built. We are all used to Wi-Fi. It has got its own advantage and disadvantage. Range is definitely an advantage, but the chances of hackers to intrude into your system if the Wi-Fi is not properly protected is a definite threat. Also, if you are away from the access points, you might not get the 100% connectivity that you expect. So, first point, you got to be careful about the Wi-Fi you are connecting to. Second point, you need to be closer to the access point for you to get better and faster connectivity. The next one is LoRa. This is going to be the future people say. LoRa is long range communication. As the name suggests, this connectivity is mostly used for application where communication must be done over long distances. Data can be sent across a wider coverage range which include 2 to 3 kilometers even with LoRa. This is a stunning factor that we need to appreciate about LoRa. And this 2 to 3 kilometers can be covered without loss or corruption of the transmitted data. LoRa depends on the radio line of sight concept. If there are no obstacles like buildings, trees or any other means, the data can be even transmitted up to 5 to 7 kilometer distance. LoRa consumes more power for longer range transmission, which is seen as a disadvantage, but definitely for the distance that it is covering, this can be foregone. It is not feasible with low power IoT applications, but it is certainly useful for long range transmissions to cover longer distance at the same time to send data without loss or corruption of the data which is being transmitted. The next one to understand is NFC. NFC stands for Near Field Communication. NFC chips are most suitable to make payment services and most of the payment services these days are based off NFC. They contain data called SEID, Secure Element Identifier. The Secure Element Identifier enables secure communication and data transfer between the NFC enabled devices and NFC. NFC is integrated into many applications these days. Some of them are NFC enabled earphones, NFC enabled televisions for screen sharing, NFC card payments and so on. In future, this will find more application opportunities and we will be using it more. Wired connectivity versus wireless connectivity. It is time to understand the difference between these two. Wired connectivity makes the system less portable. Whereas wireless gives you enormous freedom and you can move wherever you want. Wired connectivity will not have constraints with respect to power consumption. Wireless connectivity will have definite constraints with power consumption. The cost of the system is incredibly less as the cables and the connecting medium options available nowadays are inexpensive. When you come to wireless connectivity, the cost of the systems are very high because of installation of routers, access points and other equipment. When you come to wired connectivity, the signals cannot be tapped and ensures higher security. But in wireless connectivity, which include Wi-Fi in this case, 
they are all interceptable and most importantly they are less secure if they do not have proper protection with respect to securing the data the speeds of the data transfer will be much higher with respect to wired connectivity the speed of the data transfer is much lesser compared to wire connectivity but we are getting it better as and when we grow better like lora being available in the market right now wired connectivity is efficient in data transmission and non susceptible to data losses but in wireless connectivity it is still a constraint we are still working on that and in near future you will have a lot of options which enhances the quality of the data transfer while also securing the data which is being transferred at a higher speed 